we've made an application that prompts a user for information about a car and then runs the car a given number of trips or a given distance over a trip. So far it's been limited to really just one car, but in this video we're going to take a look at array lists and the do while loop to allow us to enter multiple cars. In addition to array lists and the do while loop, we're also going to take a look at another permutation of JOption pane and that is the show confirm dialog that will allow us to put some buttons on the message or on the pop-up that the user can click. So our loop will look something like this. We're going to start naturally with a start. Okay. And then after the start, we're going to prompt the user for information about the car. Okay. We're going to add a new step though. Uh, the new step is going to be create the car. Well, that's actually not the new step, but we'll say create the car or the vehicle in this case. The new step is going to be to add the car to a collection. Okay, add the car to a collection. By collection, I mean uh, a series of data of the same type. Okay, now we're going to prompt the user to create another car. Prompt user to create another car. Okay, now I'll scroll down a bit and we'll give ourselves a diamond. And the diamond will be, so this is a yes, no. Let me clarify, that's going to be a yes, no. Okay, now the diamond's going to be, did the user choose yes? Did the user choose yes? I want to make another car. Okay, if so, let me go ahead and get an arrow here. We'll move this guy out of the way. If so, remember that the idea with the do while loop is that we can iterate over we can iterate over a collection or we can process, we can do the same steps multiple times, but the important part is that the test comes at the end. So note, after the test, we're gonna go all the way up to the beginning. Let me see if we can make this look a little bit better. We're gonna go all the way up to the beginning and we're gonna start the entire process over of information about the car. Do you wanna create a car? Uh, okay, so after this then we'll go to our end if the user chooses no, then we're going to end. Okay, so we'll just grab a little line right here and we'll add a label to it. We'll say the user chose no. Up here on this line, we'll say the user chose yes. Okay, and then I'll complete this out by adding in all the arrows from one box to another. Very easy to do once I have them aligned. I just have to click that down arrow and then it adds the, uh, the process flow from one step to another step. So that's what we're going to look like. So let me go ahead and go to our program, and we're going to be doing a bit of refactoring here because we're going to need to figure out what we want to do in the loop and what we don't want to do in the loop. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's see. Uh, in prompt user, we honestly really don't need this one anymore, especially since, we're, uh, since we can use the debugger anyway. To be honest, if you find that you're using a lot of system out print line statements, ask yourself, am I using the debugger uh, to its fullest extent? If you're putting in a lot of system out print line, you're probably not. You're probably trying to avoid using the debugger. And honestly, the sooner you use the debugger, the easier your life will be. Okay, I'm going to take out the your vehicle part. That was a demonstration earlier to show how we could make multiple objects. But since we're going to do it now with a loop, I'm going to just remove that because honestly, it's just a bit of excessiveness that we don't need to worry about. Okay, now let's ask ourselves, uh, what do we want to do over and over again? Well, create a new vehicle, that'd be a good idea. Okay, uh, print the current state, that's, that's fine. It's not really adding much. Honestly, we could take that out if we want. Okay, or we could move it down. Let's go ahead and move it down. Let's take that part and we're going to move it now, we'll just eliminate it because we're already printing out the vehicle right before we drive it. So we'll just go ahead and eliminate it. Okay, enter gallons of gas prompt. That we want to do repeatedly. Uh, get miles per gallon, get odometer. We want to repeat each of those. Distance to travel, we might put in a separate loop. So let's just take this part here. Let's take what I've highlighted. That's the part where we're asking about the vehicle itself. So let's take that and let's put that in a loop. Okay. So I'm going to say do to mark the start of our loop. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to say while. 
So we decided we would finish it off right about here. While. Okay, and then our test is going to go in the parentheses after the while clause. Now, one trick, anytime we have a block, remember that a block is an open and closed curly. It's a good idea to indent everything inside that block to make it very clear we're inside a block. I can highlight and tab. Alternatively, Alt-Shift-F will do the same, for, same thing for me in NetBeans. That's a good one to remember. Okay, we're going to have a couple of compile layers, a couple of red lines, and we know we want to take care of red lines right away. So the first one is, we no longer recognize my vehicle outside of our loop. Well, why is that? It's because my vehicle is declared within the loop. And remember, scope. Scope means a variable is visible from the point at which it is declared until the close curly of the loop where it is declared. In this case, it, the my vehicle variable is alive and everything that's highlighted in blue in, in this screen. It's no longer alive here because it was declared in a more fine scope. It was declared only within this block. Fixing that is fairly straightforward. We simply take the declaration and we move it outside of the loop. As a matter of fact, we can split it into declaration and assignment, which is generally a good idea. So let's move the declaration outside, which is just name and type, and then we'll terminate that with a semicolon. Let's move the assignment inside the loop. So the assignment is going to say my vehicle, and then equals new vehicle like so. And at this point, we're in good shape. At this point, my vehicle is visible outside of the loop, it's also visible inside the loop, and we're declaring a new vehicle object inside the loop, which won't make a lot of sense just now, but that is something that is going to be valuable to us when we start creating multiple vehicles. So I'll go ahead and save. The next problem here is this while test down here requires something to test between the parentheses, and right now we don't have anything to test. So let's prompt the user to create another vehicle. With this, we can use a special type of JOption pane. We'll use our friendly old JOption pane. This time I'm going to say show confirm dialog. Okay, now take a look at this. We have parent component, which is going to be null because we're operating in a command line mode. The message we want to show the user, uh, a title, and then an option type and a message type. Uh, we can probably go with this final one here. Let's take a look. Okay. Option type, an integer de 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 designating the options available. We want the yes, no option. Message type, um, an integer designating the kind of message this is, primarily to use the look and feel. Uh, okay, so we'll do question message for that. That's fine. Okay, show confirm dialog. Parent component is null. Okay, message. What are we going to show? We're going to say, do you want to create another vehicle? Okay, title, we'll say, we'll say simply create another vehicle. Okay, okay, uh, and then option type is going to be joption pane, jot dot yes, no option, okay. And finally, the message type is going to be joption pane dot question. And terminate with a semicolon. Now, this is going to prompt the user with a simple joption pane with a yes or a no. We need to save the output of that. So remember in NetBeans, Shift-Alt-V will allow us to save the return, the return value to a variable. We'll say create another. Okay, there we go. Notice it comes back as an int, okay? Now the int represents either the yes or the no click. How do we know which number uh, represents yes and which represents no? Well, it doesn't matter because we're gonna compare it to a constant. I'm gonna say while well, create another equal equal j option pane dot yes. Okay, so what this means is that if the user clicks yes, a number is going to appear in this variable. If the user clicks no, a different number appears in this variable. We don't care what the value of that number is. 
because whatever that number is for yes, it just happens to be in this constant called yes option. So if the user clicked yes, the number that appears here will be the same as the number that's stored in here, and our loop is going to execute one more time. Now, we have one more problem. You see we have a red line here, and this is a really tricky one. Cannot find symbol. What does that mean? Cannot find symbol means it cannot find a variable that we're referring to. And that can be for one of several reasons. Number one, maybe the capitalization is different. So Java is case sensitive, which means a miscapitalized variable will not match a variable name with a different capitalization. Number two, maybe we misspelled something. That's common. Number three, we might be out of scope. In this case, the variable is declared and spelled correctly, but the scope is incorrect, and it's really tricky to see because the variable, remember, a variable is visible at a point at which it is alive, the point at which it is declared, until the end of the scope where it was declared. So while it's very subtle, this variable called create another is alive only in the highlighted blue area. It is not alive all the way to the end of this line. That's a real gotcha, especially for someone who's a bit newer to programming, because it would feel like it's available for the whole line, when indeed it's not. It's only available until that closed curly. And there's no way to take this while test and put it inside that closed curly. So the fix for this is the same fix that we did for my vehicle here, where we split the declaration and the initialization, or in other words, the declaration and the assignment into two different lines. To do that, I have to take away the final keyword, and also I just have to insert a semicolon here and then make the assignment a new line. So you see, it's the same thing at the end. It's just the declaration here and the assignment here, two different steps. Now, I have to declare the variable in a greater scope. So I'm going to take it out with Control-X. I'm going to move it up here where vehicle is. Okay, and now what's the scope of the variable? It's alive in the entire area I've highlighted in blue now because, you see, I've promoted it to a greater scope. So now, no red lines. Okay. Now, at this point, we're only, we're only getting data for one car. We're not actually saving into an array list. But let's go ahead and save, and let's just do a trial run and see if our yes-no works. Uh, let me put a comment here above the while that says, if the user chooses... Yes, prompt for another vehicle. Otherwise, do not loop again. Okay, let's try it out. So I save. Okay, right click, and we'll go ahead and choose run this first time around. Okay, enter gallons of gas. Notice, like a typical do while loop, it's going to execute at least once, and the test comes at the end of the execution. So inner gallons of gas 10, miles per gallon 10, odometer 10,000. Now I'll take a look at this. You see create another vehicle. Let me see if I can get these both lined up on the same window. So you can see how we created this create. Oh, there we go. Okay, create another vehicle. Do you see that's the title right here? Do you want to create another vehicle? That's the message we have here. J option pane yes, no option gives us the yes and the no. And then if I scroll to the right, question message gives us the little question mark there. So this dialog box appeared just as we thought. Let me click yes, and it should prompt us to enter a new vehicle. So gallons of gas, 20. Miles per gallon, uh, 20 again. Odometer, 20,000. Do you want to create another vehicle? This time I'm going to choose no. And because the value of no does not match this constant yes option, it should come right down here to line 58 and say enter distance to travel. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose no, and sure enough, enter distance to travel 100. Now the trick is at this point, I've entered two different cars. Uh, which one's actually gonna run? Well, let me choose okay, because remember, I'm not saving two different cars just yet. We'll pick that up in another video. Right now, I'm not actually saving two different cars. So let me go ahead and say distance to travel 100, okay. And let's see if it operated on the first car, which was 10, 10, 10, or the second car, which was 20, 20, 20. And if we take a look down here at in driver main, 
we'll see that it operated on the second car we entered, which is 2020-20, ran at 100 miles. 100 miles at 20 miles to the gallon is five gallons consumed, which brings our, our uh, gallons of gas down to 15 gallons. So in this video, we've seen how to implement a do while loop and show confirm dialog to prompt the user and continue to prompt the user until the user is finished entering cars. In the next video, we're going to add a for loop where we can iterate over these cars and also an array list or a collection that will save multiple cars, not just one car, uh, that we can run a certain distance. I'll see you in that video. Thank you.